Hi. Welcome back to another Terrancecapes video. In this video, I want to show a finished project. <coughs> Excuse me. Project is for a um, set of shoreboards. You can see them behind me here, um, with a couple specifications for a couple sets of the boards. Uh, these boards are very similar to another set that I did um, a little while back. Um, you can go back and take a look at a video that will showcase those. Although this has the new uh, water feature uh, coating that I'm using now, which is the, um, uh, um, I know what that is, the Liquitex Gloss Gel. So uh, it's produced a slightly different ripple effect, which I think looks better and will be more durable as well. So I'll give you a little overview of all of these boards and uh, we can see what you think. So the customer requested um, one 10 inch wide board and then three 20 inch wide boards for a total length of 70 inches. So here in the corner here you can see the 10 inch board. He requested that one of the 20 inch boards be um, at least half water. So I've done that here, made this one the deep, you know, sort of plunge to give it a uh, mostly water. And then he requested on the other two boards that the other two boards um, have a large plateau on them. Um, so what I did is I put in a large one inch high hill here. I put a few rocky outcroppings on it and you can see I scattered a few rocky outcroppings um, along the shore in a few spots as well. Um, because of the uh, large one inch hill, uh, this is probably, oh, I don't have a tape measure in front of me, I wanna say it's probably 14 inches long, maybe from here to here and maybe uh, you know 12 from this corner to this corner. Um, you know, it pushes out the land quite a bit, and so there's less water on these boards here. Um, the, all these boards have been designed for use with um, 15 millimeter miniatures, so I slope this a, a little bit more gradually than I do for some of my 28 millimeters, sanded it down, um, give it a little bit more of a smooth contour, but still preserving, you know, pretty much all of this area as a flat area on top, and of course, you know, extending out onto the rocks, uh, this would be playable area to put troops or whatever as well. A um, couple interesting notes before I go up close to the boards. Um, as, as is the common challenge with these, I mentioned it in my previous set, is um, getting them to pour right so that they have good seams here. This configuration is the optimum configuration for them matching up with the hill on one side and then the 10 inch board at the far end and then this board in between. This produces the uh, most uh, acceptable seams for the depth of the water at each of the unions as well as where they meet at the tops. Um, here you can see just a little bit of a, of a misalignment there. It's very slight though. And uh, this is actually a pretty stellar match up there. Um, I poured these boards in two pairs uh, and then you know set them side by side to compare them and for some reason afterwards when I take this board you know it matched well here but when I flip it to the other side it doesn't match quite as well there uh, and that doesn't make any sense because they've been cut with the same template so I made some kind of a small measurement area in this slope here maybe it would make more sense if we came up a little closer to it and you can see what I mean. Uh, so here from a profile, you can see the amount of resin that I've poured for these uh, water boards are, is much lower than what I had done previously. Um, I was still able to get a good transition, you know, visually in the water uh, by um, bringing out some of the brights a little bit deeper into the water area than I had in the previous set so that the, they would fade out a little bit further despite the thinner layer. So that was a nice compromise and saved um, a little bit on materials and weight. Um, now, when I carve the boards, I'm using the um, uh, the 3D scroll table with basically a big blade that I drag the boards through um, to scoop this out. And um, some of the boards, depending on their warping, you know, would have maybe a slightly different depth. But what I did is I tried to pour the river, uh, the river, the ocean water, uh, basically to the same depth by lining them up next to each other and observing their unions and the unions looked very good so they should in theory um, be um, about the same depth uh, visually from the surface uh, but this one is just up about an eighth of an inch now you can shim these boards you know with um, a small shim and oftentimes with these kinds of boards you have to shim them just to get perfectly flush and you can get this flush and back here it's like a sixteenth of an inch of a gap and it looks I think you know perfectly acceptable um, but there are some arrangements of the boards where that gap can be a little bit more noticeable um, so that's why I say you know this is the optimum arrangement and other arrangements you know will compromise that just slightly you know see even here and I poured these side by side they looked perfect 
but now there's still that little eighth of an inch, you know, and you just got to shim up that front just a hair to get that to line up right. And then it's, you know, pretty good, pretty good seam. So overall, um, I like the way they came out. I really like the new water texture and I was very tempted to put in some breaking surf. What I wanted to do is use some um, Scenics, uh, Woodland Scenics Realistic Water and make some rolling waves in a couple spots and maybe bring up the water a little bit more. But at the rate of, you know, of the time invested in this project and the customer's budget, you know, I was already pushing it and I ended up actually throwing in a few hours of my own time to wrap up these boards um, as I just didn't want to you know, blow out the customer's uh, budget. He's a good customer and he's been with me for a long time. Um, but at the same time, I didn't want to send him out without any foliage or, you know, some seaweed on him. So I, I spent a little extra time just finishing him up. Um, but in the future, you know, with somebody who's got a, a dedicated project in mind, you know, I think uh, some breaking surf on these boards is a very doable project. I feel ready to tackle that, and that's something I'd like to do in the future. But at least that gives you a sense of how the water looks, um, how the, um, uh, you know, what the, that new texture kind of looks like. You get a little sense of it there. Um, it's got to probably get one more day to clear up under this humidity um, to get pretty much crystal clear. But I find with the waves, having a little bit of white in them doesn't actually affect them too much visually as waves kind of give off little uh, right, light reflections that vary over time. And so it kind of works for these. And as a quick tip for the uh, community, you know, I know somebody who's been working on a, a water feature who, at, you know, is asking me for some tips. And I realize that many people might not really know how to pour large areas like this. So I just give you a quick tip. I'm obviously not going to have to do a full demo. Um, but basically what I've done is I've cut some hardboard dams. And then... I put some packing tape on them. Um, this is a glossy surface and it pulls away from the uh, resin very easily. And then you just make a, you know, a box basically. What I've done is I make a box and I glue all of this down to the seams I discovered for this version here that I just did. Uh, much easier adhesive. I've been using um, CA Safe uh, Super Glue, uh, which is available at um, you know Hobby Link and some other retailers. You know, you have to use foam safe uh, super glue, obviously, uh, with a foam base. And then um, once I have all of these in place, um, I run another bead of super glue down the inside seam to seal it. I hit it with a little uh, accelerant, a little, you know, sort of zip kicker just to seal that super glue. And that formed a really good seam. And uh, when I poured the resin, when I pulled it off, there were a few spots where the super glue pulled some of the foam. Um, but, you know, just because of its adhesion, not that I did into it, but I got a, one of the cleanest seams I've gotten to date uh, for doing this kind of a dam for resin pouring. So a little tip there, um, a little bit of, um, of a smooth tape, you know, scotch tape for smaller, packing tape for larger. Uh, glue that in, zip kick that with a little seam there all the way around it, and you should be good to go to pour. So there's a quick video just to show you a few minor changes and some project I had done similar in the past, um, as well as a quick tip if you want to try to emulate some of these techniques on your own. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below, and I will have pictures of these up probably by the time this goes live on um, the Terranscapes website. It's terranscapes.com, and, uh, and I'll put a link in the description if you want to take a look at the photos of them. Uh, and um, once again, thank you for watching, and keep your eye on the channel. I will be back soon with another video.